I'm here with Kathy DeFrancesco. She's a dental hygienist volunteering with Remote Area Medical. And so it is Friday, almost six o'clock, Friday, March 23rd, and you're about to kind of wrap things up right now. And I understand that there are already people in line to come yes. in tomorrow. I drove somebody to the airport and there was a gentleman that was asking me where to go stand in line when I came out of my car. So Remote Area Medical offers free dental and vision care. and. So, medical, dental, and vision. Medical, dental, and vision. Acupuncture, chiropractic care. So these people are in line right now at 6 p.m. and they're going to get a ticket at 3.30 in the morning. Correct. And then they'll start the process at about 5 a.m. And I believe it's going to drizzle or rain tomorrow. Oh my gosh. So. I mean, I just met people who've just finished three fillings. They were here since midnight. Mm -hmm. So this is an all-night, all-day process. Correct. So tell me what... What has your experience been like with Remote Area Medical? What pulled you in and why are you still here? <laughs> They're just so organized and they originally were for the remote areas. That's what the name comes from. Right. Uh, but we have our own remote area here in the United States now. There are so many underserved people. Um, it's just overwhelming and you just want to come back. I had hygienists saying, can I come back tomorrow? Can mm. I come back tomorrow? And uh, they're exhausted. They've worked a 12 hour shift and they still want to give. And uh, the patients, they cry, they hug you. Mm. They so are appreciative of what we're doing that it just makes it worth coming back again. You said that one of the hygienists who's unemployed, because a lot of hygienists are unemployed right now, Correct. she drove here to volunteer and she didn't even have enough money for a hotel. Correct. And these are the kinds of people that are, that are here. Mm -hmm. One came at 3.30 after work and said, is there anything I can do? Oh. Um, several, well, many of us show up 6 o'clock and we're here till 6 o'clock. One of the dentists I just interviewed said he expected, when he first came, that the majority of the patients would be homeless. And he said it was the, just the complete opposite, about half have jobs. Most are unemployed. Right. Or have a job but can't afford insurance. Uh, you know, the children come, whole families come, and they wait out there until they can get in. You don't hear a cry, you don't hear a whimper. We saw a 13-year-old girl with a huge infection right between her two front teeth. Mm. And we were able to give her antibiotics and tell her to, re and she got her teeth clean, and give her, tell her to go to uh, Highland Hospital in a week for follow-up. And one of the oral surgeons that was here from Highland Hospital personally saw her mm. and uh, explained the process to her, and then we talked to her grandmother. And then you also saw a man who had a cancerous lesion on the top of his mouth? Yes. Uh, well, possible oral cancer, okay. but we had an oral surgeon come over and they strongly recommended that he go to Highland Hospital immediately to have it checked out. And he was not aware. He thought he had just burned the roof of his mouth. He could feel it with his tongue. But, you know, that situation, you just are so thankful that they stood in line and waited 12, whatever, however, 12 plus hours to get in. What if they had given up? What if they had just said, this is too much, I can't wait any longer? You know, I, it's just patients like that. You just keep going, you keep going, because you know that they need the care. Mm -hmm. And it's the heart of a hygienist to serve the underserved. And this is where the rubber meets the road. And RAM provides this opportunity for us. Without them, we couldn't be doing this. You know what's amazing and to the, me? Uh, let me just yeah. say, the Zuchi people uh -huh. provided all our dental equipment for the hygiene. Ram had enough chairs to do the dental area, but the Zuchi people who have been serving us uh, have maintained the equipment, have made sure that the uh, fluids are disposed of, and um, have all the equipment maintained for us. The four units broke down today, and they are immediately on top of it, getting us up and running again. I mean, right now it's empty, but t earlier today it was just packed with right. people. You know what's amazing to me is that as we're having this healthcare debate in this country, we don't talk about dental. Dental's not even part of this healthcare right. bill. And That's yet right. dental is so incredibly important. Especially with the oral systemic link between your mouth and your body. If I see anybody in my private practice uh, that has a gum infection, my first question to them is, when have you last seen a medical doctor? 
my, my hope is that more medical doctors will say open wide to their patients and if they see that their teeth need to be cleaned, send them back to us. If a gentleman is over 50, I ask him specifically to get a PSA test. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's, there's several patients that were diagnosed with prostate cancer when they came in for their gum disease. Wow. So there's, there's many times a medical link that patients just haven't gone and I can't treat the oral cavity if I'm dealing with an unknown medically. Mm -hmm. So uh, that whole link, the medical and dental really should be linked together and, and, uh, and considered together. I met a few people who had decent health insurance today, but no dental and no vision. That's, that's the newest uh, situation we have that's going on with the insurance companies. And the other thing is they're raising the rates on small businesses most of the time by 50%. Uh, that happened to my own husband. And so, uh, you know, at that point, you have to start picking and choosing, and it seems like dental seems to be the first choice to you go. Know, and as amazing as this operation is, it's just not sustainable. I mean, you're here for four days in Oakland. You're going to Sacramento next. We could do this every weekend right, right now. Right, right. We could do this in every In every weekend. town probably across this country. Unbelievable, and you don't realize it till you come out to something. So many hygienists said th we're thanking me, and I'm turning around thanking <laughs> them because you know we saw over 600 patients today in dental alone. Do you think so. that? I mean, well, it's a big question. Maybe that's for another conversation, just about what it will take so we can actually insure people for dental. Goodbye. Everything okay? Yep. Okay. We're good. Thank you. <laughs> um, but to, at least to bring this into the conversation. I, I, think, I think, number one, that when you set up a government system, it will never be perfect. We've already seen that in Europe. We've seen it in Canada. So why do people come here for care from those countries? So I think there has to be another answer. Uh, I, I do think that one suggestion would be when a business provides medical insurance, if they gave them a tax break for that, we might find a better situation going on. Mm -hmm. There's gotta be some give and take. So that's one of my suggestions anyway. Well, thank you so much. Kathy DeFrancesco is a dental hygienist. She's here with Remote Area Medical in Oakland. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you.